Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be in Milano. I actually just arrived from the States uh, three, four days ago. Um, I was there for four months teaching at Harvard. So I was thinking today, maybe at the end, just to show also a few works of the students, maybe you are interested what they developed there also in the last semester. Uh, but basically, I thought since this is a last lecture and it's just before Christmas and it's Friday evening almost, uh, that the lecture will be a bit informal. So I will explain the story of our office, how we started, uh, you know, because we started as quite young guys, actually students, and how things are today. Uh, and also, you know, through this story, explain also the, the projects that uh, we did. So you all know Slovenia, it's very small uh, and we have only two million people uh, and beside that it's very small, uh, also the distances between uh, the different country, the different sides of country, it's basically just one hour drive by a car. We have everything like Italy, the sea and the Alps and the historical beautiful cities and we also have a very important architect Plecnik that I think most of you know uh, that did important work in Ljubljana, but also in other parts of Europe. And I think actually there are not many countries in the world that used to have an uh, architect in the money. Uh, and we, we had, so we are very proud of this guy. Uh, and we have architecture. So basically, uh, Plechnik was an architect who was working in the time of um, Le Corbusier and modernism, but he had his own path taking uh, ideas and inspiration out of Slovenian architecture, but also out of antique architecture. And as such, he was a very unique uh, architect uh, inside the movement of those era. And this is a, a big inspiration for us also. So he was working in different materials, different contexts, like from wood to concrete, and like using also elements such as, for example, here you can see it's a it's a pipe made of uh, concrete for canalization, but he used it as main columns in the church. Uh, so this is with the church uh, near Ljubljana, and this is a national library uh, of Ljubljana, a very beautiful space, and. Uh, he was working both in facades in urban scale, but also he could develop very small details like this hook of the door that you can see here. Uh, I show that because it's related to a project that I will show later, but first I would just like to say a few words about our office. This is me and Rook, my partner. We met back in the school, actually in the first year of studies, and um, we met because we collaborated in a project together. We were quite different already at that time. I was coming from a very technical school. He was coming from a kind of construction art school. Uh, and we made a great team. So basically from that first month that we met in the school, we did all projects together <laughs> in the school and also later on in our life. Uh, this is our first office. You can see the mess that we actually made when we were students. After we won the first competition, we bought this space in the center of Ljubljana and we kind of, you know, made an office, um, you know, with our hands. Uh, and this is our office today. Uh, we are uh, still in Ljubljana. We have also one small space in Paris. But uh, this is our main office uh, and moments, for example, of competition delivery is just before the panels need to go on the post. We take also many students um, to the office like uh, for six or six months practice or one year practice. Uh, this is what we are doing already for about, I think, 12 years. We made big friendships all around the world in this way, and it's kind of bring international touch into our space uh, and makes these kind of connections that uh, last forever. So uh, they give us kind of dynamic uh, energy, and I think we teach them also a lot going back. So in a way, working with students, both teaching in the school and in the office work for us is important. Uh, part of our office is also my kids. I have three, so <laughs> basically they raised up both in the studio and also in the construction site. So if I go back to the city of Ljubljana, this was the first competition we won actually just in the month when I was graduating uh, in the school. So that was back in 98. 
98 was extremely successful year for us. We won three major public competitions in Slovenia. We never ever won <laughs> so many competitions anymore. We thought at that time, wow, you know, like it's kind of easy, but it's not like life of an architect. It's not easy at all. You have ups and downs and it's a good part being uh, working in a team is that you can go through all these kind of things together. So, um, yeah. So basically, it's a city museum, just in the heart of this historical city center. It was a public competition, uh, and it's actually to extend the palace inside in the courtyard and also to do a new cellar uh, under the building. So it was actually a first project, but also the most one of the most complex projects we ever did because we had to deal with complicated structure, archaeology, problems of water that was coming from everywhere, like the underwater, etc., etc. This project was built for, I think, six years. Uh, and this is a competition entry. We had an idea to make an uh, extension, like below, uh, and we didn't know what will be fine. We knew that there will be some archaeology because like in most Italian cities, also in Ljubljana, when you start digging, you know, uh, some Roman period will appear, some prehistorical period will appear. So this is the beauty that you never know what you're going to find. And also this was what happened here. So basically when they were digging, we were deciding together with uh, the archaeologists and the team of historians which things are important to keep and which not. Uh, the palace was in a very poor condition. There was a library inside and part of it was a small museum and structurally it was like really just before kind of collapsing and they made kind of uh, interventions like this, like putting windows uh, before the war, etc., etc. So basically we kind of opened up all the new interventions and tried to preserve things that were there historically. This bar here is an original floor of a Baroque time. Uh, and then this is a piece of Roman road and a, a kind of a house, a restaurant from a Roman time. And this here is actually a floor that is on the level of prehistorical Ljubljana, where they also find some graves. So basically the project was growing together with, um, with kind of decisions where we stop. Of course, everything is conser preserved in situ. That means that there is no hydroisolation under, like f doing foundation was extremely uh, difficult task. Also where actually we were allowed to put the columns, we were allowed to put the columns where they didn't find anything special so that the floor was already damaged. Like for example, here there was a hole already before from the middle, middle era. Uh, and we were kind of, it was actually the first project where we did a 3D Rhino model uh, already at that time, and uh, we shared this 3D with structural engineer, so in a way when uh, the columns had to move, also the shape kind of changed, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. so we were kind of bouncing files between us and him, so it was kind of first work we really developed digitally back in year that was like, I think, 99 and 2000. So construction site, and later on the, the, the bar, so everything's like in original floor. Uh, in the same year, we won a stadium project that was built 10 years after. That happens often. <laughs> Either projects that you win are never built, or they are built like 10 years after, like this one or sometimes you get lucky and they're built immediately. So what is beautiful about this stadium is that actually it's in the, almost in the center of the city, so it's not in the periphery like most of the stadium. So the whole atmosphere around the stadium is very, very kind of alive, like there, like even when I come there now, there are many kind of young kids training and many activities going on, so it's in a way, uh, in the heart of the city and it's part of the city and how to train young uh, generations and older generations you know in sport uh, so this was existing at that time quite a beautiful concrete arch from the 60s and we had to do extension all around it uh, so this is the project the concept was that we made tribunes all around and we made like the highest point with maximum seats where actually visibility to the field is the best and where the visibility is not so good we made entrances to this uh, to this field so in a way it makes this kind of curve waving up and down uh, that is symmetrical but 
it never appears symmetrical uh, and somehow there are hills around. We thought that this form actually integrates in the landscape of those hills. Uh, quite nice. Um, there is program below the zero, so there are gyms for local local teams, you know, for boxing and judo and like all these kind of sports, basketball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also here are uh, kind of changing rooms for the football players, all the press rooms, and also offices for local teams and spaces such as small restaurant, bar, etc. On top of it, it's a kind of platform where you can go if you buy the ticket for the for the match, uh, and it's a kind of gathering point where you have like hot dog, beer, etc. Like in the in the breaks of the match, and you can enter the tribunes either from here or you go up to this ramp that is connecting down to the tribunes. Uh, the colors are the colors of the local team. They have this violet and yellow, very strong colors. And that was, of course, idea that we need to use that color somehow in the concept of the building. And uh, they first, of course, they wanted to write the name of the Maribor <laughs> on the, with these colors on the white background. And then we said, okay, let's try to pixelate it uh, because it's quite difficult from the graphic point of view to combine these uh, two colors. Uh, and let's try to make a grid that actually the stadium appears full even if it's almost empty. So this is what they liked. <laughs> so that's the concept. And actually, it's, it's kind of working. Otherwise, the roof is kind of polycarbonate, uh, uh, transparent. So it makes quite nice daylight, like quite dispersed in the day. And in the evening, where these reflectors that were existing reflectors, and we kept them, uh, kind of make uh, light, somehow the whole uh, yeah, the area is kind of lit from this reflector. It, it makes quite nice dispersed uh, light. It was quite a low budget to build the stadium, so basically all the elements we did were chosen quite carefully, and we tried to keep uh, as many existing elements as possible. Um, like from the same context, and also just a little bit later from time, uh, it's a villa in Blade that we did for a private client. It's actually quite a large villa. There are not many villas of this size built in Slovenia. Uh, it's a beautiful site by the lake in Blade. Uh, this is it. Maybe you know it. And actually, house was in a terrible condition when the client bought it. And he wanted to make kind of even like the house existing one had about... I think 400 square meters maybe, and he wanted to do a living room that would be 900 square meters. So basically he wanted to extend the house double the size and also put the garages and all these uh, programs beside. And uh, the National Heritage didn't allow him to do addition to the house. So he made a competition between four or five architectural offices that he invited. It's more or less the same offices we always compete together. Um, I will explain you later in one project which ones, because we also uh, did one project all together. So uh, here we were competing and we won that competition because we uh, made under extension. So we made a kind of landscape, uh, landscape intervention, making uh, under extension of the villa. So if this is existing cellar, we just wrapped all around that living area and kind of hide them in this landscape. And we made this spiral staircase that is connecting the, the ground, uh, the cellar, with the top floor. Uh, so if you see, this is the view from the back, where actually you can see this extension, especially in winter. But when you are here on the lake, from where the views are protected, you don't see anything at all except of the old villa. And this is how he actually got permission to to build this stuff. So here you can see there are garages and a little uh, space for a dock. And then uh, the entrance is from this side, and you can see through access to the lake. Uh, outside, it's all kind of glass and um, steel. The columns that support the, the, the floor and the green roof, but also work as a kind of uh, to, to, to do the glass framing. Um, and 
inside its wood because at the end it's alpine area and we wanted to do a kind of alpine cozy warm atmosphere so this is the living room that in some areas gets higher because also the landscape is higher so it's kind of going on the landscape up and down and it makes pockets of spaces like the library and working area of the of the client like living area with uh, TV, I don't know where's TV, here somewhere behind, and an another part of living area and the dining room. So basically everything is in kind of pockets and a kind of small kitchen just to make a coffee and the, the, the bigger kitchen behind that you can close if you have guests. And these stairs. This is the children rooms, so basically each important room is open to the stairs so there is always you can do a visual connection between different spaces um, from the same concept a little bit later is a little uh, chapel we did close to Ljubljana about 20 kilometers this for us was actually a very interesting project to do uh, because it's a chapel so you can not like you can forget a little bit about the function and really work in a different kind of from a different perspective from a different concept uh, so it's by existing graveyard the site so you can see here existing graveyard and there is a hill just behind this chapel so the idea was to do a kind of reinforcement wall a concrete wall that holds the hill back and contains inside also very small spaces, like service spaces, like the toilets, kitchenette, and space for the storage. And this wall goes on and hides here behind some kind of garbage for the for the graveyard, like for all these flowers, etc., and candles. Uh, and it creates one main space that is here, which is a farewell space, just for a very close family. And it creates this kind of courtyard outside where people can gather to say last goodbye to the to the person. Uh, so we have this tradition, maybe you have it in Italy, that you walk around the graveyard at the end to say goodbye. It's a kind of ceremony and then you come. So in a way it also creates this start of this kind of symbolic walk, last walk. Uh, so this is the view from the top, from the hill. We made a cross quite symbolically because in our country you have different religions and also people who are not religious. So we just wanted to do a kind of skylight as a kind of symbolic, uh, symbolic cross. So this is the view. And the courtyard is just sent. Again, it's very low budget. Normally we are involved in extremely low budget, like this is some few local people who gathered money together to make this chapel, so we had to be very cautious with everything. And some views inside, outside. It's not too loud. It's actually one young Italian architect who used to work in our office. He did all these movies, Marco Mazzotta. <laughs> Very poetic here with snow. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. <laughs> but he enjoyed working and we also enjoyed him doing it. So. I was talking before about the four four architects that we normally compete uh, in our country. So, and this project we did all together. It was a competition, again invited competition uh, for a habitable space wheel. So basically, it's a, a kind of a house that replaced a house like a, a kind of a community center in one village. Vitania in Slovenia that we none of us visited before. We didn't even know where it is, actually, although we are such a small country. And uh, 
a very important guy used to live and work in this village. He was called Hermann Nordung and he was the first person actually in the world that studied and drew sketches how when you go to the space, how you can deal with gravity and how you can actually, as a human, survive in the space. So these sketches that are much more than 100 years old, he made in the book and they became inspiration later for many projects developed either by Russians or by NASA. And it's about a rotating wheel where you can actually work and live uh, and communicate between these spaces. Uh, and also, you probably know the Kubrick movie, Odyssey 2000. It also is total inspiration for the wheel that actually he, he did. Um, so he lived in this kind of house here behind uh, and the villagers and some kind of people who are quite obsessed with his work in, uh, in Ljubljana made a group and they wanted to raise money of European community to build a museum for him and the community center. Uh, and when we were listening to this story, it seemed kind of unreal to us and of course for each of us quite a big challenge and we said, okay, let's not compete for once, let's just do it all together. So it was us and Bilk Perovic and uh, Sadar Vuga and the Kleva Grigoric Architekti. And we shared the project, so we did conceptual part together, like meeting workshops, like doing like models, etc. And then we divided that two offices did construction permit drawings and like the kind of drawings of you know the plans and the sections, etc. Two offices did the detailed drawings, and then we shared also the construction site visit. So we it was fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, so. I recommend this kind of collaboration every now and then. Um, so this is the final project. It's a, a kind of a wheel, of course. It's a symbol of the space wheel that just landed uh, and kind of makes this sh uh, kind of shape because we wanted to play with the feeling of gravity. So how do you feel if you walk on this ramp that inside is a museum because the ramp goes in both directions a little bit sloped? and you become kind of dizzy walking on it, and this is what we wanted to achieve. Uh, and we wanted to achieve that it works like it's floating, so the structural engineering was quite complicated. Also in our countries we have earthquakes, like you have in Italy, so the structural engineer actually was very brave. We were quite selective whom to choose, and he did this structure of a concrete that is holding kind of itself on this concrete circle that is behind, and it's just very little kind of supported also by these uh, columns, very thin columns that also are kind of frames of the glass. So this is construction site drawings. Here is the museum and here is a fire escape. Another fire escape will appear in this double, double skin of the facade. And then there is another room here in the middle that is some kind of library overlooking down to the main room that is a space, a multifunctional space that can gather 300 people for very special occasions. And here many things are going on, like from the village life, like, you know, the end of the school, the like universities, and et cetera, et cetera. And also sometimes as a part of the museum or some kind of theater performance. So you can see the sky and these glazed things are the offices for the researchers who work in the, in the museum. So this is the museum and the stair. And this dress is, I think, double the price of this building. <laughs> so again, very low budget. They borrowed it for the first exhibition. Uh, and this is the offices for the researchers. And you can go up to the roof to observe the views of the hills around. And then you can go down again through this uh, kind of double facade. And this is a uh, opening event that was quite special because they were projecting images on the, on the uh, facade. But they also projected a live video of the co Russian cosmonaut that was in space at that time and he said to us hello in Russian, hello Vitanie, and he was explaining his vision of Hermann Nordung, and that was a very special moment actually, to get that connection from the space. So we did several projects also of uh, 
housing, especially the social housing. We were quite lucky in the 10 years until 2008, before also in Slovenia a huge crisis appeared in construction, that we won uh, some of public and also invited competition in housing. Um, we had so much work at that time that we said, okay, we will not do projects like this anymore. <laughs> like We called them Napolitanka. Uh, this Napolitana, how do you, I don't know, yeah. Uh, so, because they all had the same background, like urban context was given, like you have that and you had like whatever, four or five stories that you could build. There was a width and the length that was given and the program was the same always. Each client wanted to have kind of the same structure of apartments, etc., etc. So we said at some point, okay, we don't know anymore what to do with the facade. So the whole our uh, investigation uh, was how to kind of uh, do a double facade layer uh, so these are all the projects, some of them longer, some of them higher, but basically the same. This is like the very first one, already won competition in 87 and built in 2000, uh, that we call it like shift. So here, first time we did these balconies and lodges, a play with them. In Slovenia, in Ljubljana, the external space of the apartment is very important, I guess, like here in Milano, like people you know, spend time on the balcony in summer. So it's a kind of, for us, it's an important piece of apartment uh, that I think each each apartment should have a piece of external space. So this was the very first project. And this was the project we won in 2003. It was a public competition for a social housing in Isola, uh, Isola by the sea and similar context. It has kind of, half of the building has the cellar also. Uh, and it's concrete. Uh, and what we did is that we investigated how actually to make um, how to make a kind of balcony that contains all the elements that people would uh, do otherwise themselves. Like they would put the cupboard there. They would kind of close the sides of the balcony with some bamboo or carton. They would normally have some kind of shading device. Uh, they would put air conditioning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We said, okay, why don't we do a prototype that contains all of this already? So it has shading. It has the cupboard. Uh, you can put your air conditioning here, uh, and you can close this shading, and you are not seen. People don't see you, but uh, you can see out to the view because the view is quite beautiful. It's to the to the sea in one side. We made perforations so that the wind uh, goes through and ventilates. Uh, and in a way, these small apartments uh, got a little bit of outside space. So this movement kind of grasped a piece of exterior and made them kind of larger, I think. So another project is 650 apartments in Ljubljana, also one competition from 2004. Uh, and it was a building we they had to build in uh, in in uh, two years, uh, so extremely kind of fast building. Given site again, very very long blocks of 135 meters, and they wanted to achieve as many square meters if possible. And in a way, we won the competition because we gained more square meters than other teams. So that's not <laughs> clients in Slovenia. Now it's different maybe with the crisis. They look at architecture with a little different, uh, more kind of positive point of view. But at that time, it was mostly about you know square meters, money, profit. That was the driver of the project. So in a way, in all these projects, we did a mathematical kind of um, kind of smart mathematical way how to gain more square meters, how to actually make this ratio between selling and construction surface better. And normally we want competition just because of that, not because the client would like our architecture. Uh, you know, clients would say, oh, maybe it's too complicated, it will be too expensive. Um, uh, so, so we hide it, what the facade will be, we never said at the beginning. Uh, so we divided the the, the um, building in more modules that actually were the same and just mirrored and they contained the same apartment. So this is like a studio apartment, one bedroom, two bedroom, four bedroom, two and a, two and a half bedroom, three bedroom, etc. And we started to make a grid 
uh, and con like grid of windows. So all windows and all elements are the same. But then we made kind of areas where the facade is more closed or less closed. This is a li little leaflet for a kind of rave party we got when we were studying in London. And it was, in a way, inspiration for our facade. So we tried to achieve that even if there were many apartments the same, um, we uh, closed some of them and some of them were more transparent. So we could kind of people could choose what kind of apartment they want to live in, like they're more open, less open. And also later on, if they get another child or they want to have a larger space, they would call us and we would sketch them how actually they can close some balcony, how can they can change part of their facade. So we wanted to develop this kind of dynamic facade that could also change in time. So these are the views from the beginning and some apartments. Even if in Slovenia we call this kind of, not social apartments, they would be low cost apartments, but they are actually done very, very well in relation to some other European or American sti like, like style of how they do these kind of low cost apartments. So next to it is another, so just next to it, it's another apartment block that will be repeated like four times at some point now. Um, and actually it will be quite dense. Uh, so we made another strategy, uh, uh, not that the balconies look toward each other, but in a way that they're open to the site, uh, like the site, they get the site view and the site sun. So we use the same material more or less and the same colors, but different strategy. And also we gave again each apartment a piece of external space, a piece of loggia, so that they get some extra just inside that surface of the apartments. So these are the views. And then apartments, so they create this kind of pockets of space that, that uh, kind of grasps uh, the exterior. Uh, the story about this building was also that we made, uh, we were doing these uh, plates were Abet Laminati, the Italian, right? Uh, and the company who, who subcontracted to do the facade didn't uh, order enough material. Somehow they miscalculated and they didn't calculate that there will be a lot of rest pieces because our pieces were kind of certain size. And then when actually one third of the building was cladded, they called 
and said, we ran out of material. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you ran out of material? Like, just get new one. I mean, what's the problem? What's our problem? Yeah, there is a problem. We cannot get new because Italians will have Ferragosto and they closed and they will not deliver new material until September. And in September, we need to deliver apartments. Uh, so the only option is we get uh, uh, Max, which is German, uh, who don't close in August. And, um, but they are completely different color and different texture. And we were like, so what, I mean, what we will do, like the rest of the building from a different material. And we were like completely, oh my God, like this is happening just to our office. Like what kind of, you know, bad luck we have always, always the worst clients, etc., etc. It's like, I guess each architect <laughs> says that. And then, you know, my partner always said, no, let's give up. I don't care about this project anymore. They can just do whatever. And, uh, and then after two nights sleep, we kind of calmed down and we said, okay, let's see. Uh, and we took some pieces of already made facade and put it somewhere else and we integrated the other materials. So in a way we make a mix with different colors and textures. And I think actually in the, in the end is, is even better than it was before. So sometimes this kind of coincidences are better okay so uh, we also do storages like for example this is from a friend of a friend uh, and he uh, wanted to do a kind of storage and offices for his company, a kind of low cost building again and he already bought this uh, concrete kind of prefabricated hall and he said well can't you do something better out of it and we took it as a challenge and in a way we played with this kind of plastic semi-transparent plastic material to make uh, you know different light effects and different kind of textures outside inside also integrated garage doors in the same colors and the same kind of rhythm so these are the offices combined uh, also, a kind of colorful uh, facade is in Gorizia, Nova Gorizia, which is close to Gorizia, Italian. And uh, again, the same kind of Napolitanka type of building, uh, but with bigger terraces this time, because we wanted to you know, make larger terraces. This is like actually the hottest city in Slovenia. Like in summer, really, the temperatures are high and there is no wind. Uh, so we made these terraces that are covered from the terraces above and we made some kind of rhythm out of this. Uh, the colors here are chosen from a local earth soil color that contains uh, a lot of iron and that's why it has this intense beautiful coral that for us was kind of inspiration for this building. So again, uh, kind of, you know, play of terrace, balcony and um, glass areas. Very important piece of our investigation is kind of studying the local typologies, the Slovenian local typologies, like what actually in this small country, in this small piece on earth is unique and special that makes us different from anyone else. So this kind of looking for cultural and historical identity is for us very important. Uh, and uh, for example, in this project here, we were trying to do that in urbanistic scale. We were studying the typologies of Slovenian typical village that in a way grew around the uh, road, the main road, and it would be houses like that, continuing with uh, kind of things uh, that go inside into the landscape of um, farming. So there would be a house and then some kind of shed or, you know, for animals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we kind of made typologies of growing villages in the same way. So one small part of that was built, and it's uh, these small houses. They only have, I think, they have like 100 square meters in both floors together, uh, and they were quite um, low cost to buy for young families, and they are made in wood. That is a local material, and also. They have this play of facade that I will show you later that, that is used traditionally in our Alpine architecture. I think also in Italy you have the same. Yeah. And this is another building from the same 
typology of this kind of uh, looking for alpine identity, let's say. So play of wood and this slate. Um, it's in a beautiful site. Bohin is another lake in Slovenia in the Alpines. And uh, from one side, there is really strong winds uh, in winter. So here we made the facade more closed. And from the other side, it's more opened uh, and a very beautiful view to the highest mountain of Slovenia, Triglau. So here we made a different kind of um, type of facade. Um, and it's a shopping mall below. And on top of it, they made apartments. Actually, it was quite a smart deal, this shopping chain. Uh, owned this site and uh, they had uh, an old shop here and they made a deal with the construction company if they uh, construct the new shopping uh, mall for free they can have the roof and they can do apartments on top of that roof vacation apartments that they can sell further and make profit out of that so that was the deal and this is a finished building the roof in a way is special wait let me see uh, because it looks like it's pitched, but it's not. It's a mask, and then there is a flat roof behind, and behind that we hit, hide all the chimneys and installation pipes and like people that put air conditioning sometimes. So I will show you we use that principle in many of uh, later projects also. These are these beautiful traditional uh, structures in the mountains that for us are inspiration like huge inspiration like uh, craftsmanship and this is a social housing that was a kind of inspired by these structures and also has the same roof so it looks like it's pitched but it's a mask that has flat roof a little bit below and all the chimneys the ventilations the gas pipes like everything is hidden behind that uh, part So this is the view to this courtyard that is done around a beautiful old tree. Um, and again, apartments that have external space and internal space changing with the play of these balconies. Uh, and a smaller house, uh, again vacation apartments in Kranska Gora, in our kind of ski resort, uh, where we actually cut the, the diagonal, like the sides of the square. There is a little shop here, uh, a pharmacy shop, and again the roof that is extended and hides the installations inside. So this is a concept quite clean and clear that creates balconies always on the corner of the facade and the, fac the roof that in a way it's pulled down to the floor. So traditional materials combined traditional elements like such and such, like try to interpret in a new way. I mean, of course we believe, especially now when we spent like the last three years a lot in America, we believe that this kind of, you know, cultural identity, it's very, very important to keep. Um, so it's something that we have in Slovenia and in Italy, like very rich history that makes us different and it's an important part of the research. A small hut uh, on by the lake again, close to the lake. It was actually a client bought this uh, plot together with the construction permit that was already done and they said we don't want to change construction permit because it takes too long. This area is a national park, but we want a different house. So what you can do inside that, you know, what construction permit allowed. And we said, okay, maybe we can do this, which is that we connect the roof, we make the porch and we collect the water in these wooden pipes we made kind of more sustainable building with more isolation, wood inside, outside, and a little bit different grid of the windows that opens toward the sun. So this is the house, and again, the elements of wood and the stone. And wood is inside.
So these are these beautiful hyrax that you can find all over Slovenia. Each region has a different type, some of with wooden columns, some with kind of concrete or stone columns. And for us, they are a big inspiration. It's a house in Ljubljana. I will not explain much because unfortunately also I don't have the photos. The client at the end didn't allow to publish any photos, which is kind of sad. <laughs> I can say <laughs> now we are always careful when we sign, you know, the contract to do a house that, but of course you never know. It's their right at the end. Um, you put, you know, years of work in the house and then at the end you don't even have a single photo. It's kind of sad for an architect. Uh, so basically it's a house that uh, follows the landscape uh, in kind of more split floors and also has a stair in, in the middle containing. So there is a little pool here and the living room and dining room and uh, sleeping areas. So I just have external photos. And the shopping mall, done in historical, historical site, very beautiful. We actually really fight to keep these buildings, but the client didn't want to have it at all. For us, it was perfect to do a shop inside and do some kind of um, you know, new intervention outside. And sadly for us, the national heritage at the end decided that, that the client can only keep the facade and the tower and all the rest can be just... Uh, concrete, you know, prefabricated mall. Uh, and again, with very low budget, we actually had to calculate each cladding square centimeter almost that we were allowed to put. So we made holes and what was the rest we used here. So that was the <laughs> strategy how to make a kind of cheap building. Uh, and actually they have this dot as a kind of symbol of the house, like you are collecting dots to get more discount. And this kind of dot was for us inspiration um, in some way. So that's the concept of this house. Uh, another box, but it's a, a house in the city center of Ljubljana. Uh, it's like three, no, four houses, historical, that we connect. They were all owned by the same company, a publishing house that owned a bookshop in the ground floor and uh, wanted to do apartments above where before there were offices. 
and it was in a very bad condition when we started it was like that and we were like peeling and opening and opening slowly to find actually what is hiding behind and behind we found beautiful columns and arches that we no one knew that they existed inside that uh, offices that were developed in the 60s and the 70s and we opened them up and integrated into apartments and we made a kind of open courtyard a garden in the middle that people from apartments can overlook and quite beautiful apartments with existing old structures inside that creates uh, the architecture i will show just very quickly this movie because um, it shows a little bit of ljubljana so for those who don't know our city maybe it will seduce you <laughs> to come and visit us. So it's a you know very nice town around the castle. We have the river and historical part. And these the three bridges are from Plechnik, the architect I mentioned before, and he did beautiful interventions on the on the um, river by the river. So I think it's nice to see now or in spring or in summer. So this is our intervention just in the city center. Uh, Paris, yeah, our first project abroad, uh, first project we got invited to do in France, actually we got email at some point saying if we want to, uh, that there will be this competition in Paris, that if we want we can send our portfolio for pre-selection, we said okay, why not, uh, and we translated it in French very quickly with the help of, you know, some students that used to work in our office, and we submitted, we were selected, we did the competition and we won it, and we were like, wow, <laughs> it's so easy in France, but it's not at all. After that, we lost all competitions in France, and it's very difficult to be selected. Uh, so this site is very narrow and long, uh, and it was to do 200 uh, apartments for students, uh, all the same apartments between the railway track that is here and uh, a, a railway kind of garage that is behind the building. Uh, and on top of that, that garage, there is a football field. So we have two faces, one facing the city and the other facing that football field that in a way is a kind of mesh protecting the, the people from the ball. Um, so this is the view to the to the city and again each this studio that are always the same gets a piece of external loggia where he can have his own intimate kind of you know atmosphere studying or after the studying or he can actually socialize in these shared balconies look in the football or looking the view of paris it's just close la villette park is here so you can see the Eiffel Tower and beautiful view of Paris from the other side also. Uh, there are brick buildings all around here, the area. So brick was in a way inspiration for the color and texture of our facade also. And we made a proposal of actually two blocks that are divided by this bridge and the garden and that contain inside also all the shared spaces such as uh, you know living rooms, living areas, etc., etc. So these are the entrances to these studios. These are the bathroom windows. And behind this is also kind of uh, uh, for electricity and things like that, the shafts. And the mesh for the ball and then inside. And the studios, they have, sometimes we choose different colors, somehow sometimes it's the same. And these lodges that in a way create quite intimate atmosphere so you can concentrate and study. Maybe here I will show the last movie. It was a very difficult construction because they were constructing the railway in the same time as our tower our uh, block and also they were constructing the building next to it so it was a lot of negotiation between the um, 
companies, the construction companies, and in France, everything is a big drama. They like to fight and make problems and, you know, look for problems. So basically, it was all the time drama, how, who can step where, how to organize. We did this project all from our office in Slovenia. We didn't have a partner office in France. Actually, we hired one ex-student that worked with us like several years before, and he was French. Uh, and he, he became, in a way, an uh, office in Paris. Uh, uh, we had local structure engineer and uh, kind of sustainable engineer, mechanical, electrical. And in France, you have to sign the contract that you are uh, on the project from the beginning to the end. As an architect, you have very big responsibility that you also um, organize the construction site. You kind of sign the, the invoice of the construction company, which is good because you don't sign if they, don't like, if they don't do the details like you want. But then on the other hand, sometimes, you know, the client just says, okay, we need to speed up and they don't care. I mean, we were quite disappointed about the construction quality in France. We thought when we won a competition, wow, like, you know, in Paris, in France, we can do probably a beautiful building not to deal with this kind of problems of construction site like we have to do in Slovenia. Uh, but we were very shocked in a way. <laughs> I mean, they were really, everything was, you know, too difficult, très difficile, très difficile, like everything was impossible. So a lot of talks, negotiation, a lot of drama. But we did it finally. We enjoyed this project very much. The client was great. Uh, of course, it's nice to go to construction site to Paris also. So. The material here is also Max, but we chose actually the inside of the material. We didn't want to have any paint or decoration on it. So each plate is a little different. It has its kind of character and also it gains its patina. So sometimes in Paris, I remember Paris as the city of really beautiful sunsets when there is sun, when it's not raining because 90% of time is raining. So when there is sun, you have these long sunsets and the very beautiful golden light all over the city and actually these golden lights and the bricks make a very nice atmosphere and this is something we wanted to achieve also in our building, this kind of copper gold color in the late afternoons. I think this is the last project I will show today. It's a football stadium in Belarus, so our second project abroad, extremely difficult experience. Um, it was kind of, you know, you lose many competition as architect and many projects and, you know, you get frustrated many times <laughs> about that, but every now and then something really nice appears. Like, for example, there was these emails in two sentences that appeared at some point on our, you know, desktop. Uh, we want to do to have the same stadium like you have in Maribor. How much would you charge to sell us the project? And we we're like, what do you mean? It's like a joke again, because of course you get a lot of spams like that. And then we said, okay, you never know. We answered that you know you we we don't sell our projects, but you deserve your own stadium. So you know maybe you can come and see us. And you know we said, okay, let's see if the, these guys are serious or not. And actually they really came. All delegation in two weeks time, like. 12 Belarusians speaking only Russian with the translator and we took them around Ljubljana and we took them to the state of Maribor and it turned out actually that they were playing a, a match in Maribor stadium and they liked the stadium atmosphere so much that they wanted to order a project with us for their own local club which is Bate Borisov, quite a good club from not Minsk but Borisov. Uh, and they said, we don't have the money yet, but we can order you the concept project, uh, and then we'll try to raise money by the local politicians, and we made this concept, and they got the money, and they finally constructed. 
to work in Belarus is a very special thing. Uh, everything is driven by politics. So basically at some point the project was top priority and then just another project became top priority. So the workers all disappeared for six months and went to the other construction site, etc., etc. So we never know how the whole thing is going to end up. Um, they have very special local requirements. So we used to work with a Belarusian company, which was very tricky sometimes. Sometimes they just didn't answer emails for two weeks and you we were like, ah, oh, what's going on? Uh, and then they answered. So it was very difficult to work. Uh, we traveled up and down also a lot um, uh, to see the construction site, but I must say that architect in uh, Belarus is not treated in the same level as it is in Paris. In Paris, you are like, you know, ma maestro. <laughs> in Belarus, you are almost on the same level as some kind of construction site. Um, not really worker, but almost there. So basically, architect is just another construction site support. Uh, but they like the concept. Some people understood that it uh, should be different and they really wanted to do it like it appeared on our renders and they didn't know how to do it. Um, the law in Belarus says that you must do everything with local material, local working force and local companies. Like they don't import anything from abroad unless it's really, really, really specific and then that must be approved by the highest politicians. So what we did, because they di didn't know how to do the facade, and it's a kind of 3D uh, mesh, like curved in this way and in this way, and it needs to kind of uh, be um, rainproof. Uh, we found quite enthusiastic guys from Germany, from Munich, Beme, who at the end sold them know-how. So in a way, they, um, they chose... Uh, how, how to do, how to fold this. They had experience with working on churches uh, and they also sold them like, uh, and, and they, they combined with the local company like material and the know-how and they worked together. It sounds good, but it was not so perfect, but at the end they did it so <laughs> with a lot of, lot of struggles. So basically the shapes, the curves, they had to repeat many, many times. Like we were going there every, two weeks and they were terrible, you know, the workers and, you know, we were like doing all the best that they do them. The site is very beautiful. It's really in the middle of the forest, just by the border of the city, uh, ex-military area where they trained. So all the parking, we hide in these pockets in the landscape and we did a plaza all around. And it's quite a lot of supportive program that is going to be bowling, restaurant, uh, and kind of VIP rooms. So this is from the other side and uh, inside. It's bigger than the, the Maribor Stadium also. It has more spaces like the UEFA and FIFA requirements are becoming more and more kind of um, strict. They really want a lot of supporting program which you must hide somehow inside this shell. So these are the views. And uh, inside. And then this plaza again, where you are when you buy the ticket and with all these stands, toilets, hot dog stands, beer stands. We were teaching the third year and this year we had an option studio about uh, extreme housing. Uh, this is a brief that I will show very quickly. Uh, and we were, the idea was how actually to bring European knowledge of how to work in the mountains, like how to do housing and construction in the mountains to America. In America, uh, as you might know, anywhere you come, the houses are the same. So either you are in Alaska or you are like in Texas or you are in Florida or wherever in periphery in New York, they actually have always the same type of houses. Uh, totally unresistant to anything, to snow, the wind, the, the, you know, the different climate conditions, even to this, um, um, you know, the, the, the wind that they have, all this kind of uh, natural uh, tornado and this kind of areas. So for me, coming from Europe, this is really a mystery, why they don't develop markets uh, like different, right? Uh, also, it's a mystery why the construction in a way it's so bad because they construct houses like they did you know, 100 years ago out of wooden frames, very badly isolated. The quality of window is very low. 
Um, so basically, for example, the project we did in uh, France, you s had to achieve less than 50 kilowatts uh, per year, per hour, the energy. So basically in Paris, you have the law now that if you do a building that is not low consumption, you will have to pay much more tax to the city. Uh, so all the construction sites now are really low energy consumption houses. In America, in a way, they talk about saving energy, but on the other way, it's just they don't care. I mean, it's like car, you know, buildings with no isolation, like too much heating, too much air conditioning. So for me, this is like coming from Europe, I look at this and in a way, um, we tried to bring students the knowledge of, of Europe to this Alaska. So we did this uh, workshop at the beginning of the studio to do a mountain shelter in Slovenia. Uh, so we got this site, actually a real site, from the Mountaineer Association where there is a shelter that they wanted to replace. And we, uh, we gave them the program to do uh, you know, to deal with how to actually construct where you have wind and uh, snow and you have to be careful how you transport, you have to be careful that you do a minimum kind of, um, a minimum kind of interior to host eight people. You have to be kind of sensitive to the nature, not to damage the terrain and leave the na nature somehow uh, untreated. So they did this workshop and the idea was to raise money uh, after we would get the projects. So this is like parts of the brief. Uh, and this is like when they went to Alaska later. And actually we did. So the good part of America is that still everything is possible. I would say it's, it's actually a country of, of big possibilities. So in two, two months time, we got the money we just kind of shared or called route to kind of different private organizations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the idea is now the students will come in uh, in uh, January to to our office in Slovenia. We will do the construction drawings, and over the spring the the thing will be built. And in June, July, when there is no snow, they will bring it to the to the mountain. This is from one of the students. So they kind of you know it's a student project. So some of them are better, some of them are worse but they were like studying how to, how you can actually fold it together and bring it to the site and then assemble it there. This one was actually at the end chosen by the mountaineers of Slovenia. In a way it relates the most with the vernacular Slovenian architecture, so the different textures, etc., etc. This is another one. It's individual projects of, this is like three weeks work of a student, but we are known, like the part, me, my partner and me, that they need to work hard. <laughs> so, you know, this is also quite a nice attempt. I don't have, unfortunately, the Alaska projects that they developed later because, um, I don't know, this is the brief, uh, because um, it, we just finished on in Friday, last Friday, and we didn't put all together the material, but we will do a book, and I promised I will send the book in February when it's done for if you want to see. So I just go very quickly. So you have there students from all around the world. We had like uh, some of, yeah, okay, that's it. I don't have more. We had like 12 options, but anyways. Uh, some of them from, like half of them were for America and half of them were either from China and Canada and Greece even, etc., etc. So, um, yeah. <laughs>